Frio. Like Fremantle is absolutely buzzing, you know, it's it's a it's a wonderful city. Well, Fremantle in the early days was uh, sort of a bit of a backwater. And well, Fremantle was very much um, like a backwater. When I told people that I knew, uh, you know, I was brought up in the western suburbs, but I was taking a, a store up in Fremantle, they said, you've got to be joking. But I took it up anyway, it was great. It seems to be it. It's not a retail uh, destination at all. Locals tend not to hand, hang around in the, in the centre of Fremantle. Even Fremantle people don't come down here. When we first came to Fremantle, it was, Frio was easy. You know, it was, rents were cheap, you know, like, everything was cheap. We just all go to Geno's and within an hour or so, you knew everything that was happening in town, every artist show, every musical gig, every political, like, tree, you know, sit-in or, it was, that information was there, there was no internet. It attracted people that were happy to drink coffee in the streets. Down on the main terraces where I usually go and have my coffee, Geno's, uh, Milk Belly, a few other coffee shops like Grumpy Sailor. What a great question. What makes Fremantle Fremantle? What makes Fremantle Fremantle? As any community, the people, the interactions, the inhabitants of the day, I love Fremantle for its progressiveness, for the um, people who are thoughtful and thinking and plan and strategically kind of work towards making things better. It's different, you know. It's kind of eclectic and a bit quirky and that fits for me because I'm a little bit like that too. There are a lot of personalities in Fremantle. It's pretty eclectic. There are a lot of colourful happies lying around the streets, having fun. Higgledy piggledy nest, if you like. It's assortment. It's colour. It's kaleidoscope. It's it's diversity as well. It's, there's lots of different people from different backgrounds and people from different walks of life. There's a lot of artists and a lot of a lot of musicians in Fremantle, a lot of Aboriginal people too. I just like the ambience of it. There's something about Fremantle that it looks good, it feels good, everything's there, there's a fair mix of culture. It's relaxed. I like it a lot. And it's a meeting place. It's a place of trading and ceremony and culture. And I noticed that people in Fremantle are trying to be just be Fremantle, or as Nimrod says, Frio de Janeiro. Bike rides. Bike rides, definitely. Yeah, the parks, the meeting places. South um, Beach. Dog Beach. Yeah. New Edition. Tropicana. <laughs> just lovely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Every sort of part of Fremantle seems to be activated and full of, you know, people wanting to create something to share or to give or to make the world a better place. It's not all boxes made of ticky tacky all looking the same. It's got a mixture of nice old small heritage buildings and large old commercial buildings. It's just a free place. There's no pretentiousness in Fremantle. It just doesn't seem to have that, that feeling about wealth and privilege. It's just open to everyone. There's just so much character in Fremantle with the old buildings, the people, the shop owners. Some of them have been here a long time. Oh, Fremantle Arts Centre. High Street. For you, High Street? Yeah. I guess I have to confess, Cully's Bakery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always my go-to place when we've got a, a crowd coming here. <laughs> Possibly the most isolated capital city in the world and its little port. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is the last Bohemia.
There's still, you know, there's still that bohemian sort of um, old hippie lifestyle that you can find in different little quiet streets and around the corners of little shops and cafes. I really love, you know, uh, being part of the, the industrial arts precinct. You know, it's a very much a forgotten part of Fremantle. The outskirts is where I like to be, on the fringes. It's very nice. Fremantle Heights, I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. We've got uh, a number of uh, businesses in this area that are, are actually remarkably successful. And uh, here, here we have Mr. Rich Humphreys. Yeah, Fremantle Industrial Arts Quarter, I guess, is a collection of creators, uh, artists, businesses, community groups, people that live, work and play in this quarter. There's a lot of creative people that have moved out and further out into the outskirts. We're hanging in by the string of our teeth, making sure that there are places for artists to make artwork. Not just clean, pretty artwork either. I'm talking sculptures and messy artworks. I would love it to be a Frio where artists can keep working in Frio and, and creative people, and we have those spaces for them to work and to live within um, within close pro proximity to, to Fremantle. It'd be great to have life in all of these places, overflowing, oozing out of the windows. Even it would be great. I always refer to the Frio bubble as a bubble that you can get stuck in, which can be good or bad. But I do get stuck in the bubble because I do love the place. But within that bubble is the South Frio bubble. It's like a sub bubble, if you like. Is Frio an enigma wrapped in a bubble? It's just a funky town. It's always been a, uh, a great, chilled, cool, cosmopolitan, uh, organic, uh, bohemian sort of place. I think homelessness homelessness is a is a, a major reality, and I think what we have to do is accept and actually accommodate it in, 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 clever, in clever ways. Safe houses, people can, can go and um, at least have a safe place to sleep. We have a big problem with homelessness and I think as caring people we should find some means of caring for them. I would like to see them housed and I think there's a lot of vacant places in, in Fremantle that that could happen. Yeah, I'm not sure if maybe there's not enough facilities for and programs for homelessness. It's an all-round very decent publication that helps homeless people, helps disadvantaged people, and the council supports a big issue. In fact, Brad is one of our biggest fans, and he constantly looks for vendors, making sure they're all right, and most of the shopkeepers do as well. We've got a very diverse community and they support and help the vendors a lot down in Frio. And thanks very much for that. We need to find a stronger way of responding to the needs of the many vulnerable people who make up this place and who contribute to it in such a, such a, such a wonderful way. I would like to see some sort of uh, area or place um you know for the youth to sort of spend time especially more disadvantaged youth um i also think the skate park in the esplanade yeah. was a great development cool as hell if hell could be cool. Naturally, I'd like to see a lot less of the um, social problems that are reflected in the people that come here to be supported by community. 
I would, I would wish them a lot easier a life. But then that's a little bit utopian, isn't it? Opportunities for Indigenous culture to be embedded throughout our everyday life. So dual signage of Fremantle and Wagyalup. Any significant places around the area to be signed and have the Indigenous story so that we can live a little bit more truer culture of what Australia actually is. It would be great to see the reserve areas and the roundhouse and all those areas um, acknowledged as the Indigenous areas that they are. Roland. Fremantle is known as Wallyalup. It was Wallyalup before it was Fremantle. Up means place of and Wallya is the woylie, which is the little kangaroo rat. They once lived along the coast here. Towards the west of Wallyalup, or right at the coast, where the Arthur Head is, that's called Mandurie. And Mandurie is a trading place uh, and meeting place. Uh, like a fair kind of place where you'd come along and trade at a certain time of the year. Um, people would come from the north, uh, they'd come from the east, and they'd come from the south to meet at Wallyalup and, and trade at Mandurie. Fremantle is a very, a very um, important Aboriginal meeting place, ceremonial place. At Mandurie is uh, the Wallyalup Aboriginal Cultural Centre and it was named by the traditional owners, the Wajuk people. About five doors down is the oldest building in the state, known as the Roundhouse. There's a similar building out at Rottnest and that's known as the Quad. They were used in containment and transport of Aboriginal people from all over the state for about 100 years. More than 3,700 men were taken from all over the state, put into the roundhouse, and they were taken, sometimes they were taken because of legitimate, I guess, uh, crimes that they committed, but otherwise, you know, they might have been just burning country, which is their own traditional practice, um, and other minor infringements. And they were taken, put into the roundhouse, and then they were sent to Rottnest or Wajamut. Everybody should know their story, not just a few people. Um, it'd be great to see the jail become a big botanical garden. Am I allowed to say that? You can say what you want. <laughs> Even at the Fremantle Arts Centre at a Xavier Rudd concert, there's a security guard watching people line up to use the toilet. That's ridiculous, you know. I feel like we really need to be, be treated a bit more like mature adults as a society instead of still living in a penal colony. So, for example, in Holland, they're closing prisons because they haven't got enough prisoners. We're building prisons because we've got too many. Yeah. Now, why don't we just say, what are they doing in Holland that we're not doing Okay. And copy it. Have you noticed many changes happening around Frio over the past few years? Yeah, lots of um, businesses have closed down. 
but maybe that's because everything's online and the rents are really expensive. Pardon me, what was that again? And the rents are really expensive. But what can you do? Internet shopping has had a huge impact upon businesses and the way shops operate. I'm very interested in shopping as sustainably as I can um, and the three or four stores that allow me to buy stuff in bulk. Local shops can't be expected to make most of their money at the shop front. It's, it's all about having sort of, you know, internet businesses and being able to sell online. That, that really struggling retail environment and empty shops, soft the economy for last since, since 2014. It stopped moving. There's a sense of unrealised potential. I'll sort it all out with a bit of humour and a bit of comedy. So it's still, it's still got it, but um, it's certainly changing. High-rise springing up, blotting out the view, concrete and steel and glass boxes. And there's, there's a lot more stainless steel and glass um, in the area. The more housing that's right in central Fremantle, the better it'll be for the city. Rather than have all this urban sprawl on the fringes of, of Perth um, and us clearing all these you know, Bankshire woodlands, which is a threatened ecological community, why don't we start some more infill in the cities and where people want to live, where there's that, where there's vibrancy and... More people living there to make it more vibrant. What I'd like to see more of is that more of that midweek vibrancy, that sense of it is a place where you really can shop, eat out, work and live all in one place. So that the, the life on the street, the life in cafes and bars is there all the time and not just a weekend thing. Fremantle has to change a little bit and go a little bit upmarket and go with the times. For me, the development and growth hasn't happened fast enough. Every time changes are suggested, there's a sort of band of conservative heritage naysayers that seem to stand in the way. Sunsets from up there on Monument Hill are magic. The elevation of Monument Hill, you know, yeah, I mean, to, to just to have that kind of panoramic view, very, very beautiful spot. Now, the big push there for a big change was the harbours, the three mm. harbours, mm. which brought about the Safe yeah. Rio Beaches group. Yep. The convener, Michael, 
another Michael, said, uh, we're not against uh, development, we're just against stupid development. And I yeah. Think that pretty much sums, sums up. Mm. Um, so we are able to preserve the beaches. What I'd love to see in the Freo of the future is the Fremantle Port, uh, something done with that in a similar way to they've done in Sydney. In other words, keep it as a working port, but also bring people and life into it. Having a working port on our doorstep is very much part of Frio's identity, but on the Frio side of the port, opening up to that waterfront and embracing it and kind of connecting the city back, back with it, I think is, is a really exciting opportunity. I'd like to see us do in the next few years, which is entirely possible. And so it came to be. So I would envisage a port surrounded by apartments that look into it, a port that the, the spare areas, and there's an awful lot of space there that's available a lot of the time, is used for free parking so people can come into Frio knowing they can ditch the car. Parts in Fremantle, we do not pay for parking. <laughs> and if it was then integrated well with the city so that it was a lot easier to move around, and that could be done with small buses or, my, or if you like, large golf buggies and just couriering people around the town so there's a freedom of movement. Sad that the town square is being evaporated a bit with council buildings and things because I think a town square is uh, you know very Im important to a, a city. I can't see King Square as being the centre of life and yet one thing Fremantle needs is a, a lively town square. And I think you know we've always had chess out in the park and the, and the um, ping pong tables and things like that I think that's just lovely. It seems like there's a lot of infrastructure going up and more housing, but I feel like we have lost a little bit of our um, our culture. Yeah, it's easily corporatized. It's got a lot to do with gentrification. I'd say Fremantle's gentrified quite a bit. It's becoming more exclusive. It's becoming, you know, another small local seaside suburb. The original spirit is kind of lingering on. What attracted me in the first place was, it was pre-gentrification. You know, if you have too much of this kind of beat development stuff, you definitely get that kind of gentrification. There's been a gentrification, <clears throat> I think, of Fremantle. Yeah. A sort of a gentrification. Yeah, it's a little bit unclear where it's, what it's going to be. Alternative gentry, maybe. Through the process of gentrification, Fremantle has able to re retain its soul and its community, and we haven't lost that. And I believe it's because we, the people who worked at the council lived in the community and came from the community. Now, I think that's changing a little bit, and I think that we should be really aware of what's going on within the council to ensure that our creative cultural capital is supported and retained here. I don't want it as we kind of get that new economic development happening just to be a process of gentrification. It's got to kind of keep, keep its soul, keep its heart. It's our community and it's not a, uh, the, the community of bureaucrats keep letting the council know what it is we want for our community. Yep. With change comes, comes positivity, comes negativity. It depends on which one you want to take. You take the positive out of it, you should always take the positive if you can. I think the reason for a lot of the positive things I can see quite frankly are because I feel like we have quite a progressive council who are able to look beyond just thou shalt do it like this and see if there are other creative ways that they can approach problems and not everyone's always happy with that. Over the you know there's been different sort of desires for change from different groups of people and you can't please everybody right so 
I think people quite like rubbing up against a diverse range of views. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to think <clears throat> that there's a, a liberal sort of quality about people's... Progressive. Some would say progressive, mm. yeah. Quite frankly, uh, the local council, the Fremantle City Council, is one of the more progressive and constructive and determined um, organisations I've ever had the pleasure of being associated with or bringing under my subtle mind control. <laughs> <laughs> In the very centre of town, there's a lot of those very mainstream retail shops opening, which went from sort of quirky boutiqueness to a bit more mainstream commercial shops, but I think they're the only organisations or businesses that can afford the rents. Uh, I think Fremantle needs more uh, appreciation uh, in the retail sector uh, and quirky little shops, quirky big shops if it comes to that. I'd like to see more small businesses. What makes Fremantle distinctive is the, the, the small businesses, which are sort of boutique mm. size, mm. and mm. They're, they're sort of businesses like Cully's and Wrightson's have oh, been here the maybe, best part of 100 yeah, years. Yeah. They really need to be cherished. What's was the question again? <laughs> I've forgotten. Rambling. What was the question again? Sorry. Have you noticed any changes? changes. Happening There's a languishing in terms of we've lost a lot of the character businesses. So a lot of boutique things are happening, like truffles. They're a little bit like you've got to search for them, but when you find them, they're absolutely amazing. The the economy of the place has become much more dominated by property development and business uh, which wants high rents rather than looking after the cherished the small businesses that give it a lot of its character. No, I haven't noticed one change. I've noticed a bit of evolution. You know, people complain a lot about empty shops in Fremantle and shop fronts, and it's terrible. It looks awful. It feels awful. But we're not the only place um, facing those issues, and they're not simple issues to solve because they're issues in a wider Australia and in a wider Western Australia. It's sad for all the for the people that trade there during the week because the people are just not coming there. They're bypassing it and going to Boragoon. What's changed is shopping centres in the suburbs have kept popping up. A lot of people are tending to not come to Fremantle and Perth because they, they can get in the car and go to a local shopping centre and, and get what they want anyway. Increased competition, be it from Garden City or Gateway or Coburn or, or even Clement Quarter, you, you've had that um, where so there's, there's greater competition. And during that time when that competition has developed, Frio hasn't got more people. In fact, Frio had, when I became mayor, had the same amount of people um, in it um, when I was born, which is, which, is, which is pretty extraordinary. So The focus needs to be um, off the mega developments. It's never going to be Boragoon. It's, it's sort of like a little pocket that could develop into a very expensive enclave unless, unless there are some changes made. How would you envision the Fremantle of the future? What would you like to see more of and less of? More bikes, less cars. More walking, less cars. More scooters, more bicycles, more carpooling. That's what I'd really like to see, less cars. More people on bikes and public transport and, and trams, whatever it might be. I'd like to see less, less cars as well. More people on bikes or scooters, or skateboards. One, two. Three, One, four, two. Five. I'll be talking about this loud, I think. And I'll be talking yeah. over. Uh, All right, come on, check. One, two. Yeah. All right, for years I've taken public transport. I'm here to just say honestly, I'll report. I love riding my bike and keeping your sight. 
Upon that with the two wheels is what I like I prefer that any day over a car The mic slave, Fremantle's a superstar We need to think about the environment And keep it silent here, here And that people need to get around It equals less pollution and it's the solution Everybody knows that's how the flow goes Need to think about it and kind of be sensible I never ever pretend to be a fool Cause I speak the truth, yeah The pollution, it's really not the real solution With the, when you think about the vehicles Always polluting the air, yeah I'm saying that I'm right up there, what? Something like that Yeah, bike riding around Fremantle is definitely the thing to do. That's that's a really great thing. How would you envision the Fremantle of the future? What would you like to see more of and less of? Definitely more street arts. That would be fun. Like I, I remember when I was a kid, the streets just used to be, you know, filled like on a weekend and now it's, yeah, it's not as busy. Just clap screen to your whistle, get on your social media like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook and write hashtag Scott Chocolate, OMG, he's totes the maze balls. And I'd lo love to see Market Street closed. I'd like to see a few more trees. I'd like to see more families. Yeah, that's the only thing I'd wish to see a lot less of. Stress, anxiety, depression, reflected in all the social issues. Less like corporations, you know. I'm not really sure about all the new development. I know a friend said to me the other day that there's less foot traffic because of things like, you know, Uber Eats and everything's kind of instant and online or delivered, you know, there's not as much connection. We're connected to our place of Fremantle and as we become more connected to where we are, we're also able to become more connected and show what we have to the wider kind of community. So yeah, I don't feel as connected to Freo as I did a while ago. They're well connected. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's wonderful. It's quite easy to bump into people that you know. That's a lovely thing, I think. Mm. It's a connectedness. I believe that as a society we need to build resilience. And I think that by working together and doing one thing together, if there is a situation where we will need to work together for some crisis situation, then we're going to be able to do it. Let's say, for example, that climate change hits us much sooner than we think, that we have people in the world that are unable to live in their houses and their places where they've lived for generation upon generation because their island has disappeared into the sea. I want to live in a Fremantle that could say, come, we're welcome, we can coordinate this, we know who's got extra bedrooms, we know who's actually going to be able to create meals for people. Um, and I get emotional about that because I think it's really something that is important to have a society and a community that can do that. And that's, I suppose, my hope and my dream is that I can do my bit towards making that a safer and more resilient place and a more welcoming place. We do live in a time of climate emergency and we actually need to do this transition in a way that uh, protects the environment. Maybe we need to care for each other more. A vision of a place that actually where people care about each other. And strengthen our community bonds and find solutions to the issues that are current at the moment and maybe that takes a little bit of coming together and yeah, putting our heads together and our hearts together and being a stronger community. Yeah, and, and, and a community that kind of cares and is progressive and kind of comes together. I think all those things. Equality and respect um, and tolerance and all those good things. That Fremantle is able to actually 
cope with that and deal with that and hold the space within our town to be able to support into the wider community as well. So it's like get your own house in order and then we're able to assist elsewhere. No, not even any thongs. Go to the beach, everyone's got sandy feet. Come back, have a coffee. Yeah. Um, then hang around long enough so it turns into a pub and uh, mm -hmm. catch up with the crew going past your local, which is the local. Mm -hmm. I'm in love, but it's a I got a great quote the other day off someone because I've started to collect quotes myself about Frio. It's Frio. Anything goes. Frio's buildings and face and reputation is something people talk about all over the world. It's location. It's, it really is a beautiful, very beautiful, special place. I'm lucky to be here. There's a three mental psychiatrist and he's expecting a new client to come in. And the client knocks on the door and comes in. They sit down and they have a little bit of a chat. And at the end of the chat, the psychiatrist says, OK, Mr. New Client, what would you say is your major problem in life? And Mr. New Client says, I think I'm a dog. And the psychiatrist thinks, hmm, could you move over onto the couch, please? And the guy says, I'm not allowed on the couch. That's called a joke. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
No dogs were patronised in this interview. Oh yeah.